Today I'm going to point out a little known fact that throughout the day the moon rotates about a half a turn clockwise and counterclockwise and the light and the dark side and the moon all move in unison as one unit irrespective of the location of the sun and that's why sometimes you'll see that it appears the sun is casting light on the moon and then other times the angle will be way off and the sun will be pointed toward the dark side and the opposite side will be lit up and that's because the moon moves as one unit with the light and dark side and it doesn't matter where the sun is. I'll tell you how you can prove this to yourself by taking four pictures in the daytime of the moon and paying attention to the light and the dark side and the texture of the moon. It all moves as one unit. Hi, my name's Steve Matthews. You can find me under Teeth of the Lamb, all one word, on YouTube or on Facebook under Steve Matthews. I wanted to talk about angular problems between the sun and the moon. Lots of times I see the moon and the shadow or the highlight and it's way, way off from lining up with the sun. I live on the west coast of the United States in Oregon in a small town called Coos Bay and it borders the Pacific Ocean so I have a great view of the Sun and the moon out over the ocean the other night I was sitting on the back porch having some coffee and looked out the window and and the moon was headed down toward the horizon and I could see it was way way off from what what it should be to line up with the Sun which had already set uh, so I called my wife and I said hey come here I want to show you something and so she came out and took a look I said what's wrong with the angle of that moon and she said well the Sun has gone down beyond the horizon right below the moon there and I said no it hasn't I said uh, in the summertime it sets right there I said but uh, in the winter time it sets south southwest so that's way off and she said ah oh, you're right so I went in and grabbed my Nikon P1000 and took this photograph that you see here and the uh, video that you saw before that and that was on January 13th of 2019 the next day I went out to the Cape Argo lookout and used my Theodolite app for my iPhone and got some readings for the sun set and for the uh, moon. With those readings in hand, I'll try to give you a better perspective of how far apart the sun and the moon were. The uh, sun was at south 64 west and the moon was at north 89 west. So essentially we have the sun southwest and the moon was due west. So now I want to show you what bothered me when I was sitting there looking out of my window drinking my coffee. Uh, look at this moon and look at the angle to the sun. Uh, it doesn't work out very well. In this visual representation of the angle of the moon and the sun, I clipped the uh, moon right out of the video that I took of it so the angle is right. Of course this is just a visual representation so you can get the idea of what I'm talking about. A lot of people don't realize that the moon rotates back and forth and like a clockwise and counterclockwise and when it rotates the moon, the shadow 
and the highlighted side all move simultaneously. And, you know, that's why we see such wild uh, angle discrepancies between the moon and the sun. And this happens on a daily basis. Uh, throughout the day, in one day, if you have a clear sky, you'll see the moon do almost a half turn. And uh, by the time it's done, it's not pointing toward the sun at all. And if the sun were causing the highlight and the shadow on the moon, you would see the craters and everything move and the shadow would stay fixed and the highlight would also. Um, here are the two photos I took both in the same day. Look how much that's turned. Uh, and if you look at the craters, they've all gone right along with it. So that highlight and that shadow are not caused from the sun at all. Here's another set of photos that I took in uh, December of 2018. And look how much that's rotated in the same day. Uh, this happens on a regular basis. It's quite a quite an angle shift. I can see some of the craters on it and they went right along with that uh, highlight. Uh, this is my backyard and I went ahead and put it side by side where the sun sets and where the moon was setting on the day that I was drinking coffee and noticed that the moon was highlight was facing north and the sun had set in the south, southwest. Look at the angle of the highlight on that moon and explain somehow, if you can, how the sun is casting that highlight on that moon. Uh, I don't see how it's possible. Now, yeah, if you put the sun right down here to the right, uh, that's where my wife thought it was uh, setting. I told her, no, it's setting down southwest. So let's play around. I'll put the sun right down where it should be. Now, doesn't that look a lot better? It could actually light that side of the moon. I can't see how, well, if the moon was transparent, the actual sun might be lighting that side or it might be reflecting off the, off the dome <laughs> or something. <laughs> Now, I know people are going to come back and say, well, you don't know calculus or you don't know physics. Uh, you're a moron. Well, what kind of a moron would I be if I thought that actual sun was casting that highlight on that moon at that angle? I would have to be quite a moron. Well, it's, it's not casting it. Not at that angle, it's not. It's an easy, easy thing to do to prove to yourself that the moon is rotating and the shadow and the highlight all simultaneously, just on a clear day, not at night. Take an early morning photograph, take one at around noon, and take one around evening, and you'll see that that's... Uh, all of it's rotating and then pay attention to the, where the uh, craters and stuff are. Here's the theodolite that I took as the moon was headed down for the horizon uh, the day after I saw that it was tilted wrong and this is the sun theodolite that I took on the same day and for those that like numbers here they are both side by side. So what have we learned here today? We've learned that the phases of the moon, the light and the dark side of the moon, and the moon itself rotate independently from the supposed cast light of the sun. We've also learned that you can easily prove this to yourself by taking three to four pictures throughout the course of a day and putting those images in your computer by time and 
analyzing that the light and dark side move in conjunction with the craters on the moon and that this all happens independently and irrespectively of the location of the sun. That concludes my topic for the day and if you like what you heard here subscribe, like, or don't. Either way I'd like to thank you all for watching and uh, you have a great day.